So last week was a bit quiet for the world of video game news, but obviously we, we are changing that up because Monday has been absolutely insane for video game news. And there are some stories floating around that I definitely want to cover. First off, Bioshock is coming back. One of the most popular games of the last generation is getting a new rendition. Next up, Metacritic is fighting back against review bombing by user scores on their website. And finally, as if State of Play tomorrow wasn't enough, now Nintendo is doing a Nintendo Direct for Indie World Games. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's talk about what's going on in the world of video game news. Now, one of the most popular franchises that we were introduced to in the last generation of games was, of course, Bioshock. I remember playing the first Bioshock game, and I absolutely loved it. Granted, I figured out the plot twist that happens in the game, like, about halfway through the game, which kind of ruined the experience for me. By the time the plot twist was revealed, I was like, I, I already knew that. I already figured that out. No, I can't believe I guessed it right. And it was just like a sheer luck sort of thing with guessing that was the plot twist of the game. But it was definitely still a game that I really enjoyed it was very unique i loved the setting of the game i thought the setting was just absolutely awesome the story was definitely very cool as well it was a slower paced game but it was definitely a single player narrative driven game that a lot of people resonated with and we got some sequels and then bioshock just kind of went away it was like what, what, what is bioshock doing are we getting a new bioshock game well today 2k games has announced that a new bioshock is actually in development now this is being worked on by a new studio called cloud chamber no, no, not Cold Chamber, the band that I was obsessed with in eighth grade. I was kind of a weird kid. But Cloud Chamber, and Cloud Chamber will be bringing this new Bioshock game, presumably to next generation systems, as 2K Games has said that this game is still a few years away. Now, what's interesting about that is you kind of got to look at the timeline for Bioshock games. The last Bioshock game that came out was, of course, Bioshock Infinite. And Bioshock Infinite came out in 2013. So it could be nearly 10 years by the time the new Bioshock game comes out since a Bioshock game has been released. Now, I think this series definitely has enough legs and strength to it to where people will want to check out the new Bioshock game. It's sort of like that cult following that you see with games like Shinmu. I think that people are going to be very excited for this game, and I think it's going to be a very, very good game. Like, 2K definitely understands that the Bioshock franchise is one of their highest rated franchises when it comes to reviews as far as people enjoying the game as well. So, Bioshock Bioshock is getting a new game and I think it's going to be very exciting. Now, have you enjoyed the Bioshock series? Is this a series that you're into? Let me know in the comments section down below. Next up, review bombing on Metacritic seems to be a new trend for people who are mad about something. I, I don't know what we're so mad about, but when it comes to user reviews, people have been abusing the system that Metacritic has installed that allows users to give their user scores. And that user score is then tallied up, and then people are like, ha, ah, we re ruined this game with user reviews. Now, we've seen this happen three times this year, and it's definitely something that's becoming more and more popular that we're seeing more and more of. Of course, the first game was Astral Chain, which I, I don't really understand why we were review bombing that game. Did we not like that it was an Nintendo Switch exclusive, it was a really freaking good game. But the next two review bombings sort of show that this is something that is gaining steam because Death Stranding was getting review bombed within like an hour of the game releasing and it's like, you, you didn't play this game. You don't know that this game is a zero out of 10. P please, please stop. And then of course, Pokemon Sword and Shield, which had a lot of controversy going into the Game Freak Lied situation, the national decks being removed, so on and so forth. But now Metacritic is actually fighting back against these negative review bombings for user scores on their web Website, as Death Stranding has been the first game that has had 6,000, over 6,000 user review scores removed from their website. Now, the scores are removed, but the actual reviews are still up. But what's happening is those 6,000 scores are no longer being calculated into the user score overall. So the, it tallies everything up and basically gives you an overall user score. Now, Metacritic removed these 6,000 reviews without any sort of warning, and they actually gave a statement to IGN about why they decided to do that. So in this statement, a spokesperson for Metacritic said the following, Metacritic takes issue of potential score manipulation seriously and has a number of policies in place to maintain score integrity. So what's interesting about that is obviously there is some sort of policy involved in this, but what is the policy contingent of? Now, obviously Death Stranding is not a zero out of 10 game. I have put about 15 hours into the game. Granted, I, I got a little bit bored with it. Like, I don't think it's this fantastic experience. 10 out of 10 game of the year 
here like a lot of people are saying but i think it's a solid seven or a solid eight out of ten because the visual style is very nice the gameplay is somewhat unique i think it kind of sucks when it comes to combat and stuff like that there are definitely very big lulls in the gameplay as far as being a bit bored traveling from area to area and of course if you don't really get invested in the story then the game doesn't really resonate with you but i still think it's a solid game overall a bit overhyped when it comes to things like that not a game of the year for me personally but i can see why some people would think this is game of the year but i definitely think there are people that don't like this game and that people are not having fun with this game so how do you decipher whether a review score is actually a review score indicative of the game or not so that's definitely a very slippery slope going forward now this whole user review thing and it's unfortunate because there's a few bad apples out there well i guess at least six thousand bad apples who are just negatively reviewing games just because they don't like it or it's not on their system of choice like it's very childish to do something like this i feel if you genuinely don't like a game that's fine there have been tons of games i've played on this channel that i did not like that i thought were absolute crap but that doesn't mean i'm going to go on metacritic and give it like a zero out of ten and not state my case about it so it's definitely going to be a very delicate balance going forward as to what is actually a honest review score for a game and a user review versus what is just a trolley review they definitely open up a can of worms with this and i'm really interested to see if other games are affected by this will astral chain be affected by this will pokemon sword and shield be affected by this i guess time will tell but metacritic has definitely opened up a window here that i feel like could end up being a big gust of wind as far as user review scores so people just just stop abusing user review scores if you don't like the game that's cool but at least be somewhat competent with your review of it and at least be honest with it and finally, this week is shaping up to be a week of announcements happening. Of course, the Game Awards happens on Thursday. There's been lots of rumors about what to expect at the Game Awards. We did a speculation video for what Nintendo was going to do at the Game Awards. Make sure you guys go check out that video because I kind of speculate on things that I expect to see. Of course, tomorrow we have Sony State of Play and there's been a lot of rumors circulating about that. Supposedly, Resident Evil 3 is going to be there. It's basically a 20 minute presentation that will be happening with no next Next gen uh, talks or anything like that but there's going to be new gameplay trailers new game reveals so on and so forth and that is happening at 9 a.m eastern time so i gotta gotta set an alarm clock because i like to sleep in a little bit but now nintendo says hey well what about us we want to get in on this as well so a new indie world which is a nintendo direct based on indie games is actually happening tomorrow as well it will be happening at 1 p.m eastern time so i'll have time to recover from the sony state of play event and make a video on that but yes now Nintendo is getting involved in this and I think that's sort of a two-fold story because obviously these Indie World Directs aren't as big as the Nintendo Directs themselves of course when you're focusing on indie games you're not gonna have major announcements from big third-party companies or Nintendo themselves but I still think there's some fun stuff at these Indie World presentations indie games are very fun indie games have definitely come a long way since very basic stuff and you can make almost a triple-a experience in a indie style game now one thing I am hoping to see is Katie Casper uh, she's hot man like she's a very very beautiful young lady shout outs to Katie Casper you know for watching this video big fan you know feel free to hit me up on Twitter but no I'm definitely looking forward to this presentation and another thing that a lot of people aren't really accounting for with this is whenever Nintendo Indie World presentations happen within a month or less a Nintendo Direct is always following it up if you look at all the Indie World presentations that we've gotten they've always been followed up by a subsequent Nintendo Direct so that means pretty much confirmed that a January Nintendo Direct is happening as far as a mainline Nintendo Direct is concerned. So I'm definitely very hyped on that as well, because obviously, like I said, the Indie World presentations aren't as big as standard Nintendo Direct, but I love learning about new video games. So this week is just, is just going absolutely crazy. We're going to get so many game announcements this week between things like State of Play, the Indie World presentation, and now the Game Awards as well. It's going to be absolutely awesome, and I think it's fantastic. It just shows how alive the video game industry is. Now, could there be some stealth drops during this Indie World presentation? I definitely think you'll see some. Maybe some games that were announced at previous Indie World presentations or during Nintendo Directs that we never saw come out. Maybe
maybe they'll be released during this. I don't know what to expect, but I definitely know that it's going to be a very fun time. And there will definitely be a lot of stuff to talk about. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel and tune in tomorrow because we're going to be talking about state of play. We're going to be talking about the Indie World presentation. I'm going to be a busy bee, but I, I like being busy. It's a fun thing. All right. So that is what is going on in the world of video games. Obviously a very busy Monday, but I'm excited for it. I love new video game information. So this is definitely very cool. So be sure to let me know in the comments section down below what you think of everything. Are you excited for a new Bioshock game? Or do you think that the franchise is starting to lose a little bit of its luster? What do you think about Metacritic fighting back against negative review bombing on user scores for their website? And of course, what are you expecting tomorrow between the Nintendo Indie World presentation and the State of Play event? Which one are you more excited for? And which one are you looking forward to watching me talk about? The correct answer is both. You're looking forward to me talking about both of them. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and check out other videos on the channel. As always, be sure to check out Amazon to get your copy of the complete Sega 32X guide, now available. A lot of people are enjoying it. Make sure you are one of them, too. Makes a great stocking stuffer for video game fans. Be sure to check out some RGT merch. We got shirts, we got hats, all sorts of cool stuff. It'll all be in the pinned comment in the comment section down below. And as always, I will catch you guys on the next video, which is going to be tomorrow because there's going to be at least two. Later.